On switch. On passe maintenant. Let's switch and let's move to the first part of our conference, the one I described earlier as being the core relationship, which consists in uh, making content available to our users. So to do so, we are going to publish Frogan's site. So the best thing to do is not to talk about this, but to show that. So Philip, if you don't mind, would you like to join me? Hi. Hi, Jean-Manuel. Thank you, Philip, for joining me. So, Philip, you and I, we are going to be moderating this um, presentation of the Frogan site description language called FSDL so that anyone can develop uh, a Frogan site. It's an XML language and the recap of its specifications are accessible on frogans.org and this is what we're going to use to design things which are both very pretty and very useful. Absolutely, you're right. We talked about the background. In my past life, I was a site publisher. In the past, we said uh, website publishers. And for those of you who know that, the designing a website, developing a, a website, means that you need to develop a wireframe and then you write text because HTML is a text-based language. But here we're changing the paradigm and we say a nice catch is more meaningful than lots of words. So we use FSDL language, which is mostly graphic, to which you can add text, but basically it's a graphic language. So, to catch up with time, we are going to slightly modify the format on our program, and I'm going to call three developers. I'll ask them to join us on stage so that they can tell us about the graphic beauty of FSDL. So, Damiano, Jesse Bana, and Mr. Aztec, please join me on stage. Hello. So, I'm going to call people on stage. I'm going to call a final, an end user. My closest working body, Victor Adam. So, as you can see, sorry Vincent, we don't have many mics, so I'm going to shut up and give the mic to my colleagues. So, we have a very good team here. I'll sit next to the smallest one. Come closer to me, Vincent, so that I don't look ridiculous. Okay, and we'll talk about the uh, Frogan site. Oh, Rather, you will be telling us about Frogan's site. So tell us. Well, first, let's let Victor show us a video, and then we'll talk about graphics and we'll talk about static sites. Those who've been working with us for a while have seen how to design graphic uh, sites, which were mostly static. But since then, the FSDL language has uh, increased and grown up, and now we can have uh, uh, dynamic sites. But first, over to you, Victor. Hello, everyone. Delighted to meet you and make this presentation. It's a demo of how we can use the Frogans technology. So to achieve that, we first have to download the Frogans player. So I go on the web. Uh, I start with voilà. frogans.org, then I scroll down, and I have this, get.frogans, which allows us to get to the web page where we can download the Frogans player. I click down. Here you see that Frogan's player is available 
on three types of operating systems. At the moment, I'm using Linux, so I'm going to download the version that corresponds to my OS. Then you have a navigation menu, so I click on download and I install the 7-zip. Just one second during as you're downloading. At the moment, we have three platforms, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, and we are working. We are working uh, to have the uh, Android version available very soon. We'll make an announcement. But uh, if you have specific requirement, uh, and I'm talking to those following us online, if you have other requirements for other platforms, just let us know. Ask questions on early platform, and we'll tell you about the future availability of other platforms. So over to you, Victor. As you can see, uh, it's an archive. It's uh, seven zips. So first, I need to do the extraction, like this. And I get this directory, Frogance Player, in which I have the application, which I'm going to run. So that's the Frogance Player button. As you can see, you can move it wherever you want on the screen, and it always goes above the web pages or any other window, like here, like there. So, Let's open a first Frogan site. So I click right on the button, and we have this uh, scroll down menu, and I click on open a Frogan site. So here is the form. I'm asked to enter a Frogan address with a network name and a site name. So let's open Frogan's star. Hello world. Donc, voici le site. So here is the Frogan Star Hello World site. Okay, we see that we're running late on the Hello World site. Yes, yeah, so a Frogan site can be moved anywhere on your screen and it will always come on top of the windows that you have on your screen. But you can also see that there is transparency here which you do not have in a web page. Furthermore, you can see that the shape of this Rogan's site is kind of rounded and that a round object is sort of protruding from the blue part, that's the Earth, and we can see that this is a totally different world than the uh, World Wide Web. Furthermore, you can, you can redimension the Frogan site, you can just increase it, make it smaller, it's seamless, as you can see. And you have this small format which you can move around and that behaves exactly in the same way as the large format. So let me come back to the initial format. Here we go. And with this, let's start browsing. Notice this arrow. When you move above the uh, the arrow it becomes green you get the rollover effect this makes it quite easy to identify clickable um, areas on your site so let's click on this arrow which takes me to the second slide of uh, Frogan's star hello world and once again it has exactly the same behavior meaning the same transparency so, if you move it above, uh, oh, if you move it over a, a, a page, a web page, you can you see, uh, you you still see it. Uh, but likewise, you can move a website below the Frogans site, which is what I just did. 
Let me now show you how to resize the, uh, the site. It has two shapes. Look at this. When I downsize, you can see that the browsing button disappears and the appearance of the slide changes. Notice that difference? So let me click and come back to the initial slide. I'm going to leave it uh, a bit smaller and I'm going to put it up there in the corner. And let's now open some more advanced sites. I have a little list. For those of you who are watching online, who are following the streaming, if you would like to type the address, go for it. You can open these online sites. Victor, um, one thing I would like to say, especially to the people who are listening to us at the other end through the computer, these addresses are actual addresses. They've been registered. So you can't just enter them anywhere, right? You need to enter them in the Frogans Player. Frogans Player 4 developer. It, this is an alpha version. It's not available to the general public. And then not any version, not any release, right? We are using alpha 1.02 or 102 r rather. Um, if you're trying on earlier versions, it won't work. And again, if you're watching us, um, if you're trying to uh, do the same thing, make sure you have the right version, Frogance Player 102 at the end. Okay, thank you for that. So let's continue our demo. We're going to open all four sites, or the next four sites. I'm just going to cut and paste them. Frogance Star Skydive Tour, here we go. And so this is the first one. As you can see, the appearance of this one is quite different. Next, we have Frogrance Star Wine Fair 2016. OK, and here it is. Frogrance Star La Creme. Voilà, je vais le mettre là. Comme ça, c'est à peu près and Frogan Star Fly Sky 360. Here it is. Voilà. So we now have all five sites. So let's uh, play with them a little bit. Um, first of all, I'd like to show you what happens when you superpose two sites. Notice that the mouse, when you move the, the mouse around, the uh, depending on where your the mouse is, where your cursor is, um, the site, one side, one, one site will appear over the other one. So, let's uh, start with this one. We have the, uh, the, the, the wine one, the Wine Fair 2016 one. So if I click on red, which is my favorite, it takes me to a Cabernet Franc uh, 2014. Um, very nice. Um, we're a, a bit short on time, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I will resize it, and as you can see, we can could get back to it later to buy a bottle of wine. Let's take a look at the skydive one. As you can see, we have interesting rollover effects. So clearly, these are clickable areas. So let's click on training. And uh, so this is skydiving. I'm not really into skydiving myself. So let me uh, downsize it and leave it up there. And let's take a look at uh, La Creme, La Creme Laboratories. Uh, we have three clickable buttons at the bottom. Let's click on Body Care. And once again, as you can see, we can move around the site. We now have the, uh, the cream, the La Creme product, and this is the vignette. Once it's downsized, which is the actual company logo, um, but I'm 
going to leave it uh, as it was before because it's quite attractive. And then we have sneakers, Fly Sky 360. Notice the transparency effect. Here you really have a nice transparency effect. Notice this. And again, let's click on Fly. You can see the, uh, the sneakers are changing colors. Okay, well, thank you very much, Victor. So, thanks for this uh, demo. I would now like to uh, ask those of you who are brand holders. Um, this is obviously a new way for you to um, uh, to uh, to communicate. If you're a trademark uh, holder, you can create a site like this. It could be a small object which stays, stays on the desktop of your audience. As you know, we live in a day and age where um, persistence, uh, customer relationship is really important. Well, with this, you can do all kinds of things on your desktop, on your mobile device, and at the same time, you will still have that little site which is there, which means it's still there in your audience's mind as well, um, which is quite uh, novel uh, in terms of concept. So, Victor, we just now were on Linux, uh, the Linux operating system. You could uh, make sure you have the right version, uh, 1.0.2. Um, the other ones don't do any internet-based resolutions. Um, so are they cross-platform, uh, Victor? Can you show us that we get the exact same results on other operating systems? Let's go to Windows. And here we are. We have the same sites. I just uh, entered the same addresses. Once again, if you're listening, if you're connected to your computer and listening to us, or if you're in the room, you can do exactly the same thing. And you will see that once you've opened your sites, they are exactly the same. In terms of pixels and everything, it's exactly the same thing. We have uh, for the Lacram brand, when it's downsized, when the site is downsized, you have uh, the company logo. Uh, if we uh, click on the wine bottle one, once again, if it's downsized, once again, it becomes the Wine Fair 2016 cork. Skydive, skydive, uh, the skydive one is the same as well. Let's now switch to Mac. Mac OS. So these are the three platforms right now that are available. Linux 32-64-bit Mac OS X, OS 10, and Windows. Windows, of course. And as Philip said, very soon there will be uh, versions, new versions for mobile devices as well. So Frogon's uh, technology will be available on iOS, Android, as well as the other uh, operating systems, mobile operating systems. Victor, over to you. Yes, says Victor. I hope in the future I'll be able to do similar demos on mobile devices. We're now on Mac. Here we are. And once again, we are seeing exactly the same thing. They behave exactly the same way. So let's downsize this one, and you'll see that we should be getting the cork. There it is. Je reprends ma, ma casquette d'ancien éditeur de site une seconde, tout ça pour bien préciser. So, once again, all these sites on all platforms are exactly the same, which means that we've not made any specific developments for one platform, which is different from another platform. It is, they're exactly the same. They're exactly the same, which means one version for each site, a very simple version. 
uh, no matter what platform um, your audience is on. You don't need a version specific to one operating system, a different version specific to another operating system. By design, they are adaptable and available on all connected screens. Okay, let's now um, take a look at this big screen. We have the four operating systems, the oldest one being at the top, uh, sorry, bottom right, which is paper. So we have Windows, we have Mac OS, and we have Linux. So can we move things around, Victor? Sure, absolutely. So this one's on Linux once again. And as you can see, I can move this site around. We're on a Sneakers one, FlySky 360. Um, this is the Skydive one. We can, uh, right. And in the meantime, I'm, I'm playing on the Mac operating system. Yeah, let's do the same thing with Windows. See, it's all very fluid, very seamless. Parfait. Great. Someone said I want a different uh, color uh, for the sneakers. There we go. I hope you like red. Now it's red. Victor, thanks a million. Thank you so much. Philippe, je propose qu'on ouvre le capot derrière tout ce qu'il y a là-dessus. Okay, Philip. Um, let's now see what's behind this in terms of technology. Uh, it's all quite powerful. These are demo sites. They've been uh, designed by graphic designers. Um, you can see that uh, these are really great in terms of brand promotions. This is what you can do with a program site uh, with a lot of wealth, a lot of richness for the products you're commercializing. Now, some people might argue this is a bit static. and. Um, what um, what can FSDL uh, do for this? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. They're very pretty sites, but they don't move much. They're not very um, dynamic. So before we uh, start, move on to the next uh, to this next discussion about dynamic state sites versus uh, static states. Uh, Dynamics pages or sites are generated as they're being consulted by viewers. It's very much instantaneous. So what makes them dynamic? Well, what makes them dynamic is because they are generated by information input coming from users. I'll give you some examples in a minute. Um, uh, what also makes a site dynamic is that a site can respond, react to a movement, and thereby change in shape. And it can be dynamic regarding information, outside information. For example, a site could be enriched by what we call an API. An API being an internet service, which fetches information, gathers information, and with that information, enriches the site, you know, based on specific considerations, parameters, and so on. All this is, has been around for years, but it's new for Frogans. What makes these sites dynamic, once again, is one single language. Um, you know, I've been to a lot of design schools. We'll have, uh, uh, we'll hear more about this later when we, uh, during the awards, where, you know, you hear about JavaScript and all kinds of languages. We have one language, FSDL. Um, fragrance slide description language. Um, it's very simple. Within just a few hours, it's pretty easy to learn the language and, uh, you know, creating your own um, fragrance sites. Uh, I'm now going to give the floor um, to some of our experts, some of uh, the FSDL specialists. So I'm going to have a question for Vincent. Hi, Vincent. Hi. Vincent works as a developer, and he's a Frogan site creator. Right. I've created two so far. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, Vincent received um, 
an award four, year, four months ago with the, uh, the site called FSDL Reminder. Could we take a look at it? Sure. I think it's online, Jean-Emmanuel. Um, so tell us about FSDL Reminder. Well, to create a site, I don't necessarily like to read all the documents and everything. And I said, well, instead, I could create a site with all the material, with all the, doc all the documentation. So my second site uh, I, I, I made using FSDL Reminder, uh, which made it very easy to remember exactly what to do, what kind of parameters to put, and, and what, and where. So, Frogan's Star FSDL Reminder, that's the site. What do we have on this site? Uh, we have different FSDL items. Yes, these are all the tags, uh, all the FSDL tags. Um, so this is the latest version. Uh, there is an, I think there is a new version, which is V14. This is V13, as you can see on the screen. If you click on any of these tags, so this you can find um, you can actually find this on the on our site it contains the same information I've actually printed it out it's a total of uh, 40 pages um, we have a shorter version as well which you can also uh, uh, you can find it on uh, Frogrance star FSDL reminder so when you click on a button for a button, you it says it uh, contains at least two layers. It's in French. Yes, but it's um, there. There will there is there will soon be a version in English as well of F FSDL Reminder. Right. So of course, as we develop the language, um, it's it's improved, but it's static. Right. It's static. It's not dynamic. One page. Um, is one page. You click on uh, on an item on the page, it takes you to another page, but it's absolutely not dynamic. Okay, so moving on to the next one now. Um, we have another site which is not available yet. Right, and it's chess. It's a chess game, right? Absolutely. And that one, on the contrary, is very dynamic. Since there are billions of combinations, it's impossible to make, to make it fully dynamic, but uh, you have a small trick uh, uh, in test mode, right, to show, absolutely. Right now you can't play with other people, or several people cannot connect at the same time. Um, test star chess. So this one, don't try, you won't have access to it. Okay, so once again, test star chess, but soon it will be available. So as you can see, we're getting an error message at this point. So this programs player has just been installed. It's been downloaded, and um, the test address has to be configured on your local computer. That's why I decided to just let you do this. I knew it wouldn't work. Well, thank you very much. And so here, here is what we're doing. We've downloaded the player. The player comes with a configuration folder, which is almost empty. It just gives you a, a link to a test site. We're now showing another local site, which requires a specific configuration of your internal address. So we're doing going to do a quick manipulation to actually copy the uh, internal address of this uh, chess site. And uh, after that, we should be able to see it. So here's just some information about this configuration uh, file. So as you may have noticed, I've just replaced the default configuration site with this one. So this one now has test star uh, so the, the, this is what you can use for tests, but you have to you need the right configuration in your site or in your workstation rather. So here you know the network where the where, where the server is, uh, uh, the language, uh, the version rather, 
you have the uh, file uh, encoding version as well as the home slide file of the fragrance site. So all these things you normally do manually. Well, here. Uh, au moyen des adresses Frogens euh, qui commencent par exemple par Frogens. Dans la présentation voilà. après celle-ci. Right, you, you will see that in the next presentation what to do to parameter a, a Frogens site. Donc je redonne le micro. So, once again, here is the mic, once again, and this time around, it should work. Test, start, chess. Voilà, donc là, il y a déjà une partie en cours. So there it is. Donc comment, comment ça marche So we're in the middle of a game here, as a matter of fact. So how does it work Well, do you know how to play chess <laughs> You select what to do, what to move, where to move it. Yeah, you can move, if you, if you move your mouse, you can see exactly how you can move one uh, uh, piece to another. Um, not, I haven't really entered all combinations yet. I have uh, horses, knights, towers, les possibilités de déplacement. D'accord. Donc en fait, en termes de... And where to move. Okay, so if you're a developer and if you're watching us, each... Pas forcément. Unit, you can click on. No, some, some are just images. Okay, so the ones you can move, you can click on. Right. Extension du bouton montre toutes les positions possibles de cette pièce. And it gives you the extension. Yeah, or it gives you all the potential moves you can make for each movable part. Exactly. So this is not online. Why is that? Because only one single player can use it at a time? That's correct. One single access, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay, well thank you for this demo. Uh, thank you very much. And hopefully it will be available to the general public soon. Well, I think um, it soon will. In the future, we'll be able to play at the same time with m multiple players. Um, so, in short, yes, it will change. So the next step, for example, would be could be to ask a, a user or a player to enter personal information like a password or an ID. And that, that's what makes the dynamic sites interactive. Let me now turn to GC uh, Banna. GC Banna um, was uh, also also received an award four months ago for Alpha Geo. Could you tell us a little bit about the site? What was it? Well, Alpha Geo was a site. It was a, a database, a database with geometric sh shapes. For example, for a circle, Alpha Geo contained the surface of the circle and contained additional information about a circle. Here it is. Here it is. Here's the site. I wasn't sure I would find it online, but I did. Very good. So this is Alpha Geo. So once again, it was developed four months ago and it is therefore static, right? Absolutely. It is fully static. So click a, a letter R. You have two words, two ge geometric stames, uh, sh shapes, sorry, that start with an R, rhombus and rectangle, both starting with an R. And on the right side, we have some, you know, interesting uh, reminders about uh, these geometric shapes. So that's the static part. And again, I urge you to take a look at Alpha Geo. Alpha Geo, uh, one word, A L P H A G E O, one word. And um, I know you're also a developer with Jinkit. Uh, you create fragrance sites and. You've actually done more work. With, with different functions, yes. I've used uh, the func the Setentry uh, function. Can we can we take a look at that? Yes. Here we go. Frogans star hello world dash entry. So once again, all this information is available. This is not a spec as such. Uh, a spec is a bit more. Um, 
d'utiliser de Elaborate. les paramètres et les valeurs des attributs de paramètres. Donc, euh, Pardon, nous pouvons... Je vais, je vais vous montrer où est le récap, si vous cas où. Just in case you were wondering, let me show you where the recap is. If you're interested in the recap, I'm on fragrance.org. You scroll down. So this is in English. You have all the uh, the important sites, including get.fragrance to for the player, which is what Victor showed us earlier. If you are interested in Victor's presentation, it's already online. And. Um, this is a small animation we did recently, and here are the technical specifications, including the FSDL technical spec, as well as the software library. We will talk about the software library a bit later this morning for software developers. But anyway, um, FSDL 3.0 recap v14. So here it is. This is the recap. Right. So this is a living document. By that I mean that it's updated on a regular basis. We value your feedback. You can use the early questions link for comments. So this FSDL side really looks like the standard Hello World, but when you click on the button here, what do you realize? You realize that a form pops up, and this is the type of dynamic element that could be used in order to establish an identification on the Frogan site, but here I'm asked to enter a name. Okay, John, why not? Then submit the form. Welcome Jean. <laughs> Welcome Jean. Hello Jean. So that's uh, an example of how we can use a dynamic element. Okay, so if you let me make it clear. The button I clicked on for the first time opened the form, which is not in the Frogan site, but the vignette has not been affected. That's a choice. You can move it or not. The two representations are totally independent with regards to the content you want to put in it. Okay. Why, the, why isn't the form in the Frogan site? And where does it come from? So why is it, is it not in the Frogan site? Because when you click on the button, a, a file named FSDL underscore request is sent to the server with all the elements that you've entered in our form field, for instance. And the form itself is presented by the operating system of the computer. I'm using, yes, the operating system is, uh, the, it's going to be modified depending on the operating system. So, okay, whether on PC, Mac, uh, Linux, or my smartphone in the future, but the form itself is provided by the operating system I'm using. And the file is called an FSDL request, yes. So, so far we've seen things traveling from the server to the client, but this time it's the other way around. Absolutely. Wow. And it's something new. It's something that was added along with the dynamic elements. So thanks to that, we can interact from one slide to another. Okay, that, so that's something new. Uh, the information goes back to the server thanks to that. So, Damien Arnoux, you've developed all this. Can you tell us more as to how this FSDL request works? What its grammar, what, how does it go to the server, comes back to you, etc. So how does uh, dynamic FSDL work? So I tried to 
I'll try and explain what an FSDL request file is. It's not on a disk, it's just a representation. It's kind of a gift wrap that the uh, site sends to the server. So when Jean-Emmanuel clicks on this button, which in terms of FSDL code is uh, is associated to a set entry element in the FSDL language. So this is one of the new elements which is part of the dynamic. So when you click on a button you can ask for information to the user. For instance on this login page, you can ask for a login, a password. Uh, the set entry element, thanks to the council attribute, allows to have a masked input or concealed input. So if uh, the user sh chooses concealed, uh, the password is not going to be displayed. It, the screen will display dots or stars or whatever. Once the user has clicked on submit, he can cancel. So it's as if he'd not never clicked on the button. So there is a way for the user to cancel this. When he submits, the FSDL request is sent to the server. It's an XML document for developers on the, so on the server side. Then the XML file is analyzed, data is sent to the server, and the server is going to process this data to generate a new page with the name of the user. So, okay, on the fly, this page is generated. Yes, and what are the rules for the use of this FSDL? Is it in the recap file? Yes, in the recap file, you have the the document for FSDL request, it's a small XML document which you can see on the screen now. In this document, you can see the new FSDL, the new dynamic FSDL documents like at the set entry. These are the entry files, these are the last ones in the entry fields, sorry. But you can also see the file fields which corresponds to data which can be connected to a button. Stupid example, I'm identifying each and every single of my buttons so that on the server I know if the user is pressed on a red, blue button or whatever. And another dynamic element is the session. It's very useful to follow a user all along his or her navigation. Just to follow a purchase cart on an e-commerce site, if you want to know how many books you've put in your cart, for instance, that's going to follow you all along your navigation. So are you telling me that there are cookies which are going to be generated Certainly not. Grand principe, uh, Our number one principle, as was said in the beginning, we want to la confidentialité des informations des provide total privacy for users' information. La session pas the session is not stored on the client's uh, station. But in a future version, it will be possible for the session to be reissued if and only if you've registered your site as a favorite. And then when you reopen it, the site could re-identify you and say, hi, Philip. So for those who just tried, because I know them behind their computers, but the favorite option in the current version version is blurred. It's not been implemented yet. It will in the future. And this is how you can save a site in your favorite and save information about your navigation sessions so that when you reopen the site, 
you can continue having this experience online as opposed to cookies which are staying on the computer of the user even when the browser was uh, shut down, was down yes and when the user will eliminate the site from his or her favorite favorites the session will not exist anymore in terms of uh, favorite storage so that's totally neutral and we can guarantee that the session is only uh, usable for this site for individual sessions on a site J this is an information i wanted to uh, insist on that you'll find on FSDL recap. These, this is about the collective sessions that we'll have later. We'll have two types of sessions, individual and collective sessions. So an individual session is a session that's going to be for one single site, whereas a collective session is for a network. Quite typically, we can take the example of Facebook, star and if I log on Facebook star Damien Facebook star recognizes me and then if I go to Facebook Frogan uh, star Philip it's as it's a collective session and as I'm not F Philip's friend on Facebook the site is going to offer me a link to become one of Philip's friends so these are sessions connected to a network network in the Frogan's meaning of the word, not not a network of friends, but that's the part before the star. And it will be able to manage experience between several users. Absolutely. Okay, so in conclusion to this part, I'd like to, and thanks for these explanations, but Jesse, uh, can you make a demo of a site that you worked on which has interactive interactivity on the user side and on also on the backup backend side yes so we can open frogan's star safe safe something safe safe brands so, as you can see, the site was in English. There are two buttons. Check availability and choose different PFN. PFN being the acronym for Public Frogans Network. Alors, euh, la fonction de ce, de ce deux the function of these two buttons for uh, choose uh, different PFN, it's to PFN change the uh, Public Frogans Network uh, of the set entry, which is linked to the a check availability button, so change network. For instance, if I want to to change language and press any button, so here using this site, if instead of re registering uh, registering an address, you want to know whether such a such address is available in the Frogan Star public network. I'm going to search in all public, Frogan's public network in all the languages that exist. So I want to know if it's available in Frogan star written in Chinese, for instance. Yes, so when you click, you see that PFN has changed. And when you click on check availability, so I'm so sorry, I can't write Chinese. <laughs> yeah, maybe I didn't choose the right uh, type of spelling. No worries, we, we can check Frogan's, star Frogan's. 
just by copying the PFN. Or if you want, you can test Alpha Geo. Why not? Et lorsqu'on submit, and when you submit, you see that Alpha Frogant uh, Alpha Geo is not available because it's been registered already. Okay, so you have an input from the user that keys in a certain number of characters or, or letters, and then you have the interactivity on the back end backhand side because the server tells us no this name has been registered can't be registered a second time okay here we uh, ask the uh, main server whether the address was available absolutely so that's a perfect transition for the uh, session on Frogan's address which is coming just after this one just a word about the use of the FTC Wi-Fi, it wasn't reliable, but it's been repaired, so you can be connected to the FTC Wi-Fi uh, right now. But please avoid streaming and video, because that takes too much bandwidth. Uh, last thing. Are you finished? Yeah? Okay. So last question. We had a question on Twitter. I just wanted to say one thing. Jean-Emmanuel, could you click right on one of the Frogan Star site and on the Death Star site? I have a comment with regards to the last version, which was just shown, because now we have two different networks. We have the Death Star and Frogan Star network. So we've changed the colors of these different networks. And for Death Star, it's in blue, written in, in white. And on the long run, you can select the uh, font color and backdrop color so as to uh, have a better rendering of what your address is going to look like in the future. As for Project Star uh, addresses, it's going to be their final color with a yellow backdrop and writing in black. Damien. Maybe this would be obvious, but you talked about a collective session in the Frogans, uh, in the dedicated Frogans networks, but we don't see how this could work with public Frogans networks. Yes, the only potential we envisaged is to have no collective session on the Frogan star network because it's very heter heterogeneous in nature. There are many different uh, sites, so there is no, it's not meaningful to have this kind of uh, uh, public sessions. Okay, thank you. As you're with us, two questions about Twitter or Facebook that were just handed in to me. And the first one says that somebody tried to download Frogan's player and the piece of software has crashed. So for those of you on Facebook and social networks, saw, saw it. So why? I can't see any response here, but this is an alpha version from the developers. And even if it was improved with regards to the initial version that was published a few months back, it still contains some bugs. And I want to thank those people who go through this type of experience to get back to us and tell us, okay, I did this, this, and that, and it collapsed. And if you can even send us a screenshot, it's going to be easier for us. But, you know, this is a, an open standard, and it's going to be improved if we all contribute. So I'm asking all those who have had reliability problems to let us know. Don't worry, we won't be upset. Quite the opposite. This is information we value. Second comment that was made is that this piece of software is slow. One, it crashes. Second, it's slow. There again, this project plan for developers has not been optimized, and it's not been through quality con control in terms of performance. Of course, this is a scheduled 
in the development of Rogan's technology. It's going to be available in the coming weeks and of course we promise that the performance of the piece of software are going to improve over the next few weeks. So if you have a few words you want to say about performance, no, not specifically. Well, maybe we can ask the question to Alexi because I said he would be part of this session and there are so many people on stage that we, can't, we can hardly see him. So, Alexi, tell us more about performance, the alpha period, etc., etc. This is scheduled and this will be done before the uh, final version is released. Absolutely. So now with regards to the various problems we've encountered since the origins, we've sorted out many of them. Others we've not fixed on purpose because we want to do things in the right order. We'd like to be able and do everything at the same time and satisfy all users in one shot, but that's just impossible. So we secure our progress. We've adopted a step-by-step -step type of approach. Uh, we had the three uh, landmines, la uh, 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 three, uh, three milestones, sorry. Uh, two are behind us, we have a much faster graphic display, we're still adjusting that in terms of graphic display. But for this conference, what we encouraged or what we favoured was the release of dynamic elements so that we can prototype Frogan sites which are very rich in terms of interaction with users. And this at the expense of speed. But speed is not an issue for us. We have trust in developers and they are the ones who know that we can always increase the rendering speed for objects having this uh, size. As for the whoops windows, these, that's very interesting. Yes, because contributors on social media have shown the oops um, problem. That's problem four or four. And this is going to help our teams identify the problem and fix it. But I'm quite certain they've already identified the problem anyway. Thank you, Alexi. I'd like to conclude talking about something absolutely crucial that we've not said about Frogan's players and the Frogan's site. And this is it. So, if there are too many Frogan sites on your screen, you click on the button and they all dis disappear. You click back and they pop up again. Sorry for showing that, but this is also important. Sorry, sorry also for the format of this presentation. And I guess that if there are Frogan developers who want to start, we can't spend all the FSDL spec. We can't spend all our time on it. We can't show you everything. Last time we showed um, elements when we had our tutorial and we showed some dynamic elements for this, uh, uh, for the Frogan's technology conference number six. This time we would have liked to show you how we do this concretely, but we preferred showing you examples so that you feel, OK, it's possible. I can do it. There, there are documents out there. Uh, they're available. The specs are clear. They can be used. They're usable. And don't you worry. If you have questions, you have uh, a mailing list, and you have animations around the FSDL. We talked about it. We'll continue organ organizing events. We've been invited to various events. So there are tutorials, uh, alkathons. Uh, so stick to the mailing list. Subscribe to announcement in order to know where the future Frogan's FSDL uh, um, class is going to be organized. Thank you. And as our friends are going back to their seats, there is another question from the social media.
about one of the very first sites with a very streamlined uh, design that says that some of the buttons don't work. Absolutely. This is what we said earlier. These sites, these are demo sites, kind of showcase sites. And we've not developed a user's interface and a complete navigation experience for these sites. All we want to do is to give you inspiration, to give you ideas, to show you that it's possible to do very nice things with SFSDL and with Frogan sites. So sites that we publish are showcases, demos, small concepts, but so far, they're not uh, trying to be exhaustive. And now it's up to you to get inspiration from this to work out very functional sites and generate income from these sites.